It's Will Chu here, your financial engineer, and you know what day it is today. It's Two Minute Tuesdays. Let's get that intro rolling. So this week's Two Minute Tuesdays is all about the revolving credit facility. What is it? How is it used? And why you should consider it? What are the pros and cons? So let's roll that counter. So what is revolving credit facility? Well, think of it as a big overdraft account. Now I'm going to draw some pictures because it's just much easier to visualize. So to understand what a revolving credit facility is, first we need to understand what is principal and interest. So principal is the amount that you've borrowed from the bank to buy this property and interest is the bank that's charged you to lend you that money for you to buy that property. Think of revolving credit facility as a big overdraft account and let me give you an example of what one would look like. Let's assume this customer has a $50,000 credit limit and what that means is that this person can only draw up to a maximum of $50,000 and so it's no different to a credit card limit assuming that you've got a credit card limit of $5,000 that's the maximum you can draw up to. Now the interest rate is 4% and it's calculated daily and it's billed at the end of the month. So let's assume that this person has a $50,000 credit limit and your income the following day is $10,000 comes into this account. So $50,000 minus $10,000 your new balance is $40,000. Now remember the interest is calculate, calculated daily. So instead of paying 4% on $50,000, now you're paying the difference at $40,000 at 4%. This person uses his revolving credit facility as his daily transactional account. So his food, power, direct debit comes out of here. And by the end of the month, he spends about $5,000. So the new balance is $45,000. So he's actually draw, drawn back up $5,000 and again, remember, it's calculated daily. Now, the following month, his income comes in again by $10,000. So his balance now drops down to $35,000 and the cycle repeats. And the reason why this is real powerful is because every time the repayments come in, majority of it is going to be repaid in the principal amount, not the interest amount to the bank. And if you do it right and you budget it right, then by the end of the year, hopefully you've now shaved off $50,000 in principle. So let me give you a comparison why a revolving credit facility is so powerful compared to a traditional way of fixing your entire loan for one or two years. So let's assume that again, it's a $50,000 loan that you've borrowed and a majority of those repayments that you make regardless if it's fortnightly or monthly would go towards the interest. A bulk of it would go nearly 80% of it. And then over time it slowly drops away and then you're principal amount, which is the amount that you've borrowed from the bank, really starts to ramp up. So you can see a small portion is actually the principal amount and a large portion portion goes to the interest. When you compare it to the revolving credit facility, you're making big lump sum repayments because your income is coming into it. You're making $10,000. Now you are obviously redrawing drawing down on again and then repaying it. But if you're very disciplined, you're spending less than what you're putting in, i.e. less than your income that's coming in, then this is a very powerful way. So what are the pros and cons of having a revolving credit facility? Well, the first one is flexibility. So you can make any lump sum repayments without incurring any fees from the bank compared that to a fixed term loan. Secondly is the ability to redraw. So in case if something does happen like an emergency that you need to do some work around the house, using this example, your current balance is $35,000. Remember the limit is $50,000. You can draw up to $15,000 to do your emergency works or whatever it may be used for. Thirdly is the ability to repay your loan much quicker than going down the traditional path. What are the cons of having a revolving credit facility? Well, there's gonna be monthly fees involved and that's depending on which bank. Secondly is the interest rate. It's going to be on a floating or variable rate so it does go up and down over time and also you need to be super disciplined having this account because if you're not disciplined using this revolving credit facility then it may not be the best for you. You're better off actually going down either a traditional path or maybe having an offset facility which I'll explain in another two minute Tuesday. Now it doesn't mean that your entire home loan is going to be on a revolving credit facility. Most typically you will have it in a combination of fixed term loans. So you'll have a portion on revolving credit and then also a couple tranches or couple portions 
in a fixed tin facility. That way you can manage your wrist much better. Here's a bonus tip and hopefully I'm still within the two minute counter. So instead of using this account as your daily transactional account, you're going to use your credit card as your daily expenses. And what that means is that you're not going to get charged daily interest on this account. You're going to be using the credit card and by the end of the month you're going to use this account to repay the credit card so you don't get charged interest on that and you're going to reap the rewards from that credit card so that is what a revolving credit facility is if you got value out of it thumbs if you liked it subs if you loved it and i'll see you guys next week for another two minute tuesdays